So what made you want to get into wrestling? Well, I grew up loving it, watching it as a kid. I didn't know that I wanted to do it till I tried it, you know. My first match was in Minneapolis, Minnesota, where I started under the tutelage of Vern Gagne, a former promoter, world champion. And the older guys didn't like the young guys coming up. It was a fight to earn their respect. You were really tough or you were gone. My man. It's your boy. How are you, my so man? Thank you so much, man. Man, so good to see you. Good to see you. Thank you. Absolutely. Let's go over here and sit down, All right, thanks, man. Thank you. I started watching wrestling when I was a very, very, very young kid. My grandmother loved it. She got me into it. As a kid, it was everything. But the guy that really just captured me was Ric Flair. I watched it with the, uh, the award show. Oh, you yeah, the Rolex time. <laughs> you know it. Yeah, man. You know that's why I wear Rolex this week, right? I got you. Because of you. That's why I do a lot of things, because of you. Well, Gary's a great guy. I can't say enough. We have become more than friends. I can't tell you how close I am to him. We met at a bar. He's sitting at the table right next to us. We're going back and forth with him. And it was instant friendship. Every time I see his phone number, I freak out. I said, I'm not joking. I've known Rick for 20-something years. And every time I see his phone number, I can't believe Rick Flair's calling me. I, and when everybody asked me how this thing with my robes became such a novelty in terms of people buying them and the extravagant prices, a lot of this was the fact that we got together for the Jimmy V fundraiser. In Raleigh. The one that, where everybody was there. I think it was know, 1999. 1999. Yes. You got Barkley, you, Michael Jordan. Jordan was there. And Hootie was really touring a lot. We were on fire, and Jimmy V was a big thing to us. So we walk in to the auction, and first thing I see is the Ric Flair of And I turned to the guys in Hootie, and I said, I don't care what that cost me. I'm leaving with that. And we laughed. And I remember, man, it started to get heated, because it was a big number. It, it put a price on the robes, and then well, it, you made, know. it put me on the map. I know you, you don't like to hear that, but here I am. I'm the wrestler, right? Even after all the WrestleMania that, to have someone of your level of fame set the bar. So, and all of the excitement, I don't know how I could have forgotten which one it is, but I told everybody it's the black butterfly you have. It's not the black butterfly. It's not. It's not. It's still, a, it's an amazing white robe, but it's not the black butterfly. Let me get it for you. Oh my God, wow. I love this robe yeah. so much. How was I under the impression it was the black and I, white one? I don't know, it's not the butterfly robe. Yeah. Put this on for me, Nate. Rick wore that to matches. He walked down the aisle with that. He stepped into the ring with that and took it off and gently placed it to the guy on the other side of the ring. <laughs> I mean, Rick did that with that on. Strutting. You to come out with it, man. Is, everybody tried to do it. No one did it like you. Yeah. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> gotta feel it. You gotta be. You gotta be the nature boy. <laughs> you know, this is the greatest first of all time, and I'm here putting this robe on that he wore, walking down the aisle. To, but I'm putting it on him, and I own it. It's mine. I told my kids, you can sell it when I die, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this is staying with me. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the prize. Of, and I got some great stuff. That's the prize thing that I have, is I have a robe that you wore to the friggin' ring. Thank you. Thank you. It means a lot. Now that you know that the robe that Darius bought at the auction was not the butterfly robe from Royal Rumble, any idea where that robe might be? No idea. I have no idea where it is. We're not talking about rock and roll music. We're not talking about Hollywood, California. We're talking about the greatest sport of them all, professional wrestling, and I'm the man. It's hard to put Rick's popularity into context. If Flair was telling you a story about being in Vegas and we just got in off a private jet, we didn't sleep for three days, we were at Caesars and like he's name dropping celebrities and all that He wasn't telling you a story. It was legit. He was just telling you what happened from Thursday to Saturday. You know what a feeling it is to be able to walk out here and captivate the female audience the way I do. I mean, the girls over here are hollering. 
your career, you know, hey. And he's able to captivate not only his fans, but superstar athletes, actors, musicians. The American culture just idolizes him. Monday Night Raw is live from the award-winning and critically acclaimed WWE Thunderdome and Tropicana Field. Bad Bunny is without a doubt one of the biggest stars in the world today. The man is not only the most streamed artist on Spotify in the last year, but he just so happens to be a huge Ric Flair fan. So Bad Bunny would be a logical place for us to try to get a lead on the Ric Flair butterfly rope. Hey. My man, we met in Brooklyn one night, just randomly, and uh, we just, Became friends. Yeah, the Shambaya video on top of a rooftop. <laughs> in that, yeah, I remember yeah, that yeah. day was special. Yeah, yeah. I was I was nervous. Yeah, yeah. that was phenomenal. Yeah, I'm gonna mad. Yeah. Yeah. And, the yeah. Land, so. and then I, my birthday. Thank you for I, that. I, oh thank no, thank you. Then it goes platinum, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's so. a hit. It's a hit. Yeah, yeah. And Nature then, Boy. Ric Flair's cultural impact is second to none between the Bad Bunny music video, between the Offset music video. As a 71-year-old man, he's still cool to 20-year-old rappers. <laughs> yes, he can do it better than me. Rick is considered the, one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time, but the heartbeat of Rick is that, like, I know I say it over and over again, but he gets more popular with age, which is crazy. Woo! Woo! Who else can walk that aisle night after night Woo! Look at us only I can look. Well, I grew up watching you, this business, and I, I love it, you know? Music is your lady, but this is... Yeah, it's something the, special. Something special, yeah, yes. Yeah. And wrestling's always been there. And um, when we saw you, Wendy, Wendy wanted you to put a robe yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, take a picture, yeah. So we, that was, as a favor to us, we wanted a picture with you with the yeah. robe. But now it's turned into like a, a an episodic time in my life where they're chasing these treasures down. Ones that were stolen out of arenas, ones that my wife, one wife took five, you know, <laughs> and another took two. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I got yeah. it, I got it. So um, actually, one of the robes you're looking for is the black butterfly robe okay. that I wore at uh, Royal Rumble great. in 92. Do you have any idea where that might be? Um, not really, but knowing you, I think maybe it's a girl house or something like that. <laughs> of course. <laughs>